Good morning, Colonial. This is Pastor Tammy. Um, and I'm running a little late this morning. I'm a little flustered, but that's okay. We're gonna get all set up here. Ooh, there's that bright light. We'll do it this way so that light isn't quite so crazy. Good morning, Bernadine. Thank you so much for joining me today. I apologize for being a couple minutes late, but I'm so glad that you guys are here. If you're expecting to see Pastor Mark today, because it's Tuesday, surprise, you get Pastor Tammy today. Um, he, Pastor Mark was kind enough to, hey, good morning, Pastor Mark. He is kind enough to switch with me. Tomorrow, I am heading down to Tulsa to pick up my baby girl and bring her home for Christmas. We're so excited. She's actually transitioning home. Um, so if you are looking for Pastor Mark, join us here tomorrow at 10 a.m. and you will find him. But hopefully for today, you're willing to stick with me. I will do my best to live up to the expectations that Pastor Mark has set. So I know he likes to give you updates on how his fantasy football team is progressing. Um, and this week, um, after both of us losing in the first round of the playoffs last week, Pastor Mark, who was the number one seed in our league, and myself, who was the number two seed in our league, faced off um, this past weekend in fantasy football. And I just have to say, the first time that Pastor Mark and I played each other in fantasy football, it was completely embarrassing. I mean, he annihilated me. His team scored almost 200 points. My team barely scored 50. It was embarrassing. Good morning, Rosie. I'm so glad you're here. I'm filling you in on our fantasy football draft or uh, league for the church. I know this is this is what you people want to know. Good morning, Karen. Your son will be here tomorrow. He switched with me today, but I'd love for you to stay with me. Anyway, I have completely regressed. So, Pastor Mark and I are facing off again after an embarrassing loss last time we played together in the regular season and so my goal for the game was to score 50 points like small goals he's still predicted to win I think I have like a 10% chance of winning or something like that so it all comes down to the final Monday night game and believe it or not my team actually showed up and so it's a close game and I have one player left on Monday night a player who averages scoring 14.5 points per game and I only need 13 points to pull off a victory. I'm so excited. I have faith. I have hope. I'm believing. And at the end of the half, my player had negative 0.6 points. How, how do you even get negative points in fantasy football? Needless to say, Pastor Mark won. So congratulations, Pastor Mark. You once again defeated the pigskin princesses, which is a fabulous fantasy football team name. I'm just going to say all right hopefully by now everybody has had a chance to join us if you're expecting pastor mark he switched with me he will be here tomorrow at 10 a.m and you get me today i hope you stay tuned um good morning janet <laughs> mark will be here tomorrow but hang with me okay so we are in the second week of advent christmas is just a few days away and this week we are rediscovering love and we are reminded that Jesus was sent to us because of God's great love for us. A love that we in our humanness are incapable of grasping. A love that is wider, longer, higher, deeper than we could ever imagine. A love that, that surpasses knowledge. A love that, as we will learn today, we cannot be separated from. So I want to know if you have a particular Bible verse that you came across or was sent to you or showed up in your life at a very significant time. If so, would you share that in the comments? Would you tell us what verse it was and when in your life that this verse spoke to you? The verse in our devotional today um, was sent to me in a card um, after my first miscarriage. And so that was almost 20 years ago. But every time I read this verse, every time I encounter this verse, it takes me back to that time in my life. And I'm just curious if you have verses that do the same for you. So turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 38 through 39. And Paul writes, for I am convinced 
that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Chapter 8 in Romans is often considered to be one of the hallmark chapters of Scripture in the Bible. It is amazingly deep and poetic. It is filled with truth and theology, and it kind of explains the Christian faith all in one chapter. And Paul summarizes this, this amazing chapter of Scripture with these two verses. It is tempting to over-interpret lists like this when we find them in Scripture, but it's really hard to over-interpret this one. In general, Paul uses extremes like this to indicate completeness. So when he says, neither death nor life, he's referring to the two basic states of human existence, but he also means everything in between. And there are a lot of things we can be besides alive or dead. There's a lot of gray area between those two extremes. Regardless of the state of your existence, of life, whether you are healthy or sick, whether you are blind or paralyzed, whatever your mental, physical, and emotional state of being, you cannot be separated from the love of God. Neither angels nor demons refers to the spiritual beings and it summarizes the entirety of the spiritual world. Nothing in the spiritual realm, realm can ever separate you from the love of God, neither present nor future, which literally translated would be coming things, neither anything now or anything to come, any coming thing. And this represents all of history. There's never been a time in history, in your history, when God has not loved you. And no time ever will come when we will be separated from the love of God. Paul breaks his parallelism, parallelism here to, to reiterate that no spiritual power of any kind, Satan does not win. He will not and he cannot separate you from the love of God that is found in Jesus Christ. Neither height nor depth and, and these are, are, are maybe the most difficult of the pairs to, um, to identify. They can be applied to the space above and below the horizon. And, and in the ancient people, when Paul was writing this, it often, um, it, people invested any kind of celestial phenomena, anything with the stars, um, had a spiritual significance. So it's possible that, that Paul is again referring to the spiritual world here. But Paul also uses language like this in Ephesians 3.18. And in that, he's referring to a spatial sense. He's referring to heights and depths and, and just the earthly things. And so I think it's more likely that he's choosing yet another way to help us understand that there's nothing in all of this world, whether we are dead or alive, and whether it's things that we're facing now or things in the future, no matter if they're above us or below us or where they're at. They will not separate us from the love of God. Anything else in all creation, there is nothing else in this world, this physical world, the spiritual world, the temporal or spatial world, nothing created. Here's Murphy. Nothing created. All things outside of God are created. Everything that is not Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit has been created. And there is nothing that he has created that will ever separate us from his love. I don't know what you're going through right now, and I don't know what you're gonna go through in the days and in the years to come, but I do know, regardless of how good or how bad it is, God loves you. He has never stopped loving you. He never will stop loving you. And I know that, that that thing 
that you're going through or that thing you will go through that is either so sweet you haven't even given God another thought since it happened or so incredibly hard that you're convinced God must not care at all. That thing, whatever it is, will not separate you from the love of God. His love for us, for, for you, is demonstrated every single day in the gift of his son, Jesus. Jesus, who came to earth as a tiny baby one Christmas morning, born in the lowliest of places, welcomed by the poorest of people. His son, who lived a perfect life and who willingly died a sinner's death on a cross. His son, who forever defeated death when three days later he rose from the grave and is now seated at the right hand of God. This Son, Jesus Christ, because of him, you cannot be separated from the love of God. Because God so loved you, he gave his one and only Son that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life, never to be separated from the love of God. Of this, Paul was convinced. Of this, I am convinced. And I pray that you are convinced of this truth as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son so many, many Christmases ago. It is because of him that we can know beyond a shadow of doubt we will never be separated from your love. Lord, let that truth sink in to so many who need to believe it this Christmas season. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. So I mentioned at the beginning of our time this morning that I'm heading out tomorrow to bring my daughter home and, and we truly could not be more excited. Two weeks ago when we made this decision, she was doing really, really, really well. Um, and, and we were confident that this was the right choice. Um, but to be honest, um, she has really struggled this past week, really, really struggled. And we're still bringing her home and I still think that's the best decision and I still think this is where she belongs. But if you get a chance to say an extra prayer for her in the days to come, would you do that? Transition, I mean, eating disorders are an anxiety disorder. That's what they are. It's an anxiety disorder that manifests itself in, in the way in what she eats. And man, her anxiety is getting the better of her right now. So if you wouldn't mind saying a prayer for her and for us, we would greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Join us tomorrow right here for Daily Devotionals with Pastor Mark. And I will see you next year. This is the last Daily Devotional that I'm going to do for 2020. We're taking a break after tomorrow. And we will be back on Friday, January 1st with Pastor Bob. So I will see you next year. And hey, share this on your Facebook page. Thanks. Bye.